This video is sponsored by Hive. They want me to show you guys the next generation of smart heating. It packs all of the goodness of the original thermostat, but at a more affordable price. Check it out. Did you know honey is winter food for bees? And you probably know bees live in hives. But why am I telling you this? Well, this is the Hive thermostat mini, and it has a couple of things in common with honey. Number one, it's pretty sweet all year round. And number two, it's extra useful in the winter. And you might have clicked on this video because you want to know what are the advantages, what are the main reasons to buy the Hive Mini, and you will find the answers to that in this video. And there's one really important fact that you must know about before you make your decision, and I will explain what that is, so stick around. And here's an important side note, there are two types of Hive thermostats. One that's built for hot water tank boilers, and one for combination boilers. At launch, it's roughly 50 pounds cheaper than the original Hive thermostat. And this might not sound like a lot, but once you start adding five or six thermostats to your property, the money starts to add up. So keep in mind, six zones is the maximum amount of zones you can control with the Hive thermostats, but there is a gadget you can get from Hive that can allow you to adjust individual radiators and I'm gonna show you that a little bit later on in the video. You can actually mix and match the thermostat. So if you want the larger V3 in the entrance hall and then the minis around the house, you can do that. Now let me give you a guided tour of the new design and the interface on the Hive Mini. So first of all, the Hive Mini is slimmer, sleeker, and arguably more stylish. And those are three words that are often used to describe me. Okay, I'm only joking. Nobody's ever said that about me. Probably quite the opposite but the Hive Mini is those three things. And just like the original Hive thermostat, it's got the mirrored finish. And I like this design choice because what better way is there to make a smart home device blend into its surroundings than to equip it with a mirrored surface that reflects its surroundings. It's completely wireless and it connects to the Hive Hub, which is hardwired to your internet and that communicates with a receiver that's hardwired to your electrics and physically connected to your boiler. And these devices communicate with each other using Zigbee. And if you're wondering what Zigbee is, let's ask Google, what is Zigbee? According to Wikipedia, Zigbee is an IEEE 802.15.4 based specification for a suite of high level personal area networks with small, low power digital radios, such as for home automation. It's a low power, long range radio frequency that's secure and a lot of smart home products use it. So going back to the actual thermostat component itself, it simply runs on AAA batteries and these can last up to two years. So that means it doesn't need to be wired into the mains and therefore realistically it can be placed anywhere. And if you remove the back plate, you can fix this to a wall using a few screws. And the Hyde Thermostat Mini is extremely lightweight. If you don't want to use a drill, you don't want to put holes in the wall, you can use some good quality double tape to pretty much fix this anywhere. However, here's a pro tip. Having used the Hive Mini for a while now, it's best to keep it in a colder area of your house and definitely not near a radiator as behind these little slots around the edges is where the Hive Mini takes its temperature readings from. And the Hive Mini lives up to its name because it is smaller than the V3 thermostat and Hive have achieved this by getting rid of the dial that was at the center. Instead, we have three capacitive buttons, an up, down, and a select button. And the screen is where the dial used to be at the center. It's a little LED screen, very power efficient. And also Hive have ditched the boost buttons that were located on the top of the original thermostat. And those boost buttons would boost either the hot water or the central heating in one hour increments up to a maximum of six hours. And you can still do this, but with the Hive Mini, you can only do it on the app. So now we've just got three buttons, just like the three seashells in that film, Demolition Man. <laughs> he doesn't know how to use the three seashells. But don't worry, they are easy to use. So check this out. Center button brings up two options, heating or hot water. You use the arrow keys to choose which one, or you can go back to the main screen. Let's say we wanna adjust the heating. We hit that button there, now, do we want to set it on manual mode, schedule mode, or switch it off? I'm gonna leave it on schedule because I've already set this all up on the app. We can override the temperatures by going into manual mode and selecting whatever temperature we want it to be. I'm in the YouTube room right now and it's giving me the reading for the YouTube room, which is 24 degrees. It's like a bloody oven in here. Here's the other option. Hit the center button, choose hot water. 
Here we can adjust whether we want it to be on or off or work according to the schedule. Again, I've got mine scheduled. I don't really need to do this unless I really need to turn it on and I don't want to use the app. When adjusting the target temperature, when on schedule mode, if you increase it above the actual temperature, this will trigger the heat to come on regardless of whether in schedule mode or manual mode, as this acts essentially as an override, the same as if you were in manual mode. This should then revert back to the original temperature if on schedule mode. So when your schedule kicks in, it will adjust to that temperature that you set. And what's interesting to me about this is I think there's going to be some people out there who are going to be a little bit scared of this because it's more web based. But actually, in reality, the streamlined nature of the user interface actually makes this a bit easier to use and less complicated, in my opinion. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. So as you can see, you've just got the basic but essential controls available to you on the actual thermostat itself. And everything else is app based. Well, almost everything. There are some more physical controls that can be found on the receiver connected to your boiler. Here you will find manual override buttons built into it so that if your internet stops, you can still operate the hot water and heating manually. And this takes me nicely onto the installations. So honestly, when it comes to installing the Hive Mini, I would not recommend you do it yourself unless you're a trained engineer or tradesperson. Trust me, I've tried to fit a smart thermostat myself before and it did not end well. In the end, I had to pay someone else to fix what I've messed up. So my personal opinion is, it's better to pay someone else to do it for you. It's just 59 pounds if you're an existing Hive customer with a Hive Hub and 119 pounds if you aren't. And now instead of just boring you guys to death with all of the settings and stuff like that, I wanna tell you about some of the standout features that I think you will really appreciate. So you can, of course, set your heating schedules and in the winter months, there is a frost protection feature that prevents your pipes from freezing and exploding. And if you happen to have the Hive Home Shield security system, you can use your alarm sensors to trigger an action on the Hive Mini. For example, let's say you know you get home after 6 p.m. every day from work. You can actually set an if this then that command that says to the Hive Mini, when the front door sensor triggers, boost the heating and the hot water for an hour. And you can go even further with this. If you have Hive smart bulbs, let's say, you can say, when I open the front door, turn the living room light on and turn up the heating. So you can get real creative with it and I do like that feature. And also it integrates with Alexa and Google Assistant. And here's an important side note, you don't need to be interlinked with Hive Home Shield in order to perform these kind of actions. And another standout feature, in my opinion, is the geolocation service. So you can set it up that when you get within a radius of your house, it will send you a prompt and ask if you want to start warming the house or the hot water. And also when you leave the radius of your house, you'll also get a notification asking whether you want to switch off your heating and hot water to save power and the polar bears. And if you're a bit of a control freak, you might want to buy these Hive TRV radiator valves that can regulate the temperature in individual areas of your house. And I'm told you can have as many of these as you like, as long as your radiators are compatible. There is a compatibility checker on the official Hive website. And check this out. Although Hive is not advertised as a learning thermostat, it does actually learn and it has a learning algorithm called the TPI algorithm. That stands for time proportion intervals. And it takes roughly two weeks to figure out your house's characteristics, specifically when it comes to how long it takes to reach a temperature target, how long it can maintain that temperature once it's reached, and at what point it needs to switch the boiler off or on again. And I think you'll agree, this is an important feature because you don't want your boiler switching on and off a thousand times a day, every time it goes one degree below or one degree above the target temperature, it will do it intelligently, and in doing so, it can save you money when working with the other features found on the Hive thermostats. And another feature which is an optional extra but could be very useful to some of you guys is the Hive Heating Plus service. So if you subscribe to this, you will get a sort of 24 seven autopilot that will help to optimize your heating usage so that everything runs more efficiently. There's a lot to like about Hive Heating Plus. It can help you reduce your bills, monitor your heating efficiency 24 seven and lower your carbon footprint. And a new feature is the schedule assist function coming in March, 2022. Using a database of customer specific heating behaviors, schedule assist will monitor energy usage to offer truly personalized tips, how you, the customer can control your heating more effectively. 
and it will do this by showing you exactly how you can save more energy through making small adjustments and it will also give you guidance on where cost savings can be made. And there's also a new feature in the works which is called the carbon calculator. This will give you a visual representation of how much you're helping the environment around you. It sounds like a great feature, definitely keep an eye out for it. And you also get an extended warranty on the hardware as well as discounts on additional Hive stuff like the Hive Home Shield and the bulbs and other smart gadgets. And there is more to it and you can learn about that if you hit the link below this video. Now just to recap the advantages of the Hive Mini, it's slimmer, sleeker, lighter, it has all the same functionality but it's web-based. However, if you're slightly more old school and you prefer pushing buttons and turning dials instead of using automation, then I would recommend you go for the original high thermostat. But here's that really important fact that I mentioned at the beginning of the video that could be the deal breaker for you guys. The Hive Mini is quite heavily dependent on the internet, whereas the original Hive thermostat gives you much more device control even if your internet cuts out. If your house is more modern, more minimalistic, you don't have any issues with internet and stuff like that, then this could be a great choice for you because it's like the original Hive, but it's mini and arguably more stylish. And thank you guys for watching this one. And also thank you to Hive for sponsoring this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, a thumbs up would make my day. A subscribe would make my month. And if you just did that, you're now one of the finest subscribers known to man. And I will see you in the next one. So don't be late.